Welcome back to Texas by Design. Uh, this is part two of our two-part episode with Commissioner Long. Commissioner, welcome back to the program. Well, thanks. Glad to be here. Let's talk a little bit about, once again, the private development community. Have you been able to, to really work with that community, or how have you been able to work with that community to really accelerate some of these more complicated projects, um, since they are a key stakeholder many times in, in developing infrastructure? Right. Um, I think two ways. One, just a quick recent example, um, a developer was building or is in the process still of developing a really large community um, and they needed a left turn lane into uh, to part of the neighborhood and they came to the table, paid for half the project and it allowed us to really accelerate getting that done because um, it would have been several years down the road before we were able to do that if it was just dependent on the county. So that developer coming to the table and partnering with us uh, was really significant. But I also think too that that development community has been really a key player again in our long-term transportation plan by working with us to align the roadways with that plan Plan, as well as in some cases setting aside right-of-way uh, to, to be able to do that because if we don't set aside the right-of-way now um, it it's not getting any, God's not making any more it's not getting any cheaper right right so um, that is really what our, one of our main focuses is looking at how can we work with that development community to get those roadways to line up mm -hmm. and um, what we always tell people is we're not going to build that tomorrow it would be really scary if you looked at our map and and thought we were going to build it tomorrow. We're not. Yeah. That's, again, the forever plan, um, but that development community and partnering with us has really helped uh, make sure that when this development and this development are done, the roads line up. But once again, you're showing progress. You're showing the community progress and that really you're coordinating, looking after their interests, and, and we're, we're laying the groundwork for that, uh, that long-term uh, vision that you've, you've casted for them. So you s serve as, as the chair of the capital, it was a capital area metropolitan planning organization. Um, there's a lot of stakeholders associated with that group. Um, can you talk to us a little bit about uh, what your role is as the chair of Campo? Yeah, um, I was honored uh, in January of this year to be selected by my fellow board members to serve as chair. Um, having served on Campo since 2007, um, it's kind of scary. I'm the longest serving member of Campo. Uh, they look to me as the resident historian. So you've um, seen people come and go, I guess. Right? I have. Um, and, but that's really given me great perspective as chair. Um, and, and there's a lot of turnover on the board, as you can imagine, with elections mm -hmm. and, and new people coming on and off. We have 21 different members from six different counties and municipalities and transportation organizations. Needless to say, that is a very diverse group of folks. <laughs> um, but And there's some topics that are easier to navigate than others. Um, but as chair, I'm always trying to help remind our board members um, to keep our eye on the big picture mm -hmm. and our role as policymakers. We have an incredibly talented Campo staff um, and experts in their field uh, who have the ability to deliver on projects and and th the ones that result from those policies policies that we make. And as chair, I think as uh, we continue to move forward, trying to uh, keep us moving in the direction that we've set with our planning uh, is going to be really important. And, and uh, sometimes it's more challenging than others, but it's a lot of fun. It sounds like you have as much communication as the chair of Campo <laughs> as you do in your, your day job as, as county commissioner. So um, that's great. That's great. You guys have been doing a lot of planning, obviously getting ready for uh, really rolling out some new projects, new exciting projects that are going to make some long-term benefits for for the uh, the Campo region, if you will. Right. Um, so can you talk to us a little bit about the first half of 2020 and what that's looked like for Campo? Yeah, um, definitely we hit the ground running. Um, it has been uh, a year in which we've had an incredible amount of work to do um, in some really challenging times, for sure. <laughs> Um, in addition to what had been planned for a long time of, of completing the 2045 long range plan, which we have to update every five years, um, we also had the incredible blessing of the State Transportation Commission, commission dedicating over $4 billion, wow. billion wow. dollars, wow. <laughs> towards improving I-35 through the Austin area. And with that blessing came some challenging and tough decisions. Uh, the Transportation Commission asked Campo to come up with a list of $633 million worth of projects to defer. Not to not do, but just to defer. 
And I, I really have to hand it to um, especially our rural counties and our smaller municipalities um, and the folks that uh, are serve on the board from those areas they kept their eye on that long-term goal and this really once-in-a-lifetime opportunity uh, to fix I-35 and they proved that tough, tough choices um, can be made for the good of the region. It was, it was a challenging time but uh, again I don't, I don't know that the Transportation Commission has ever set aside that much money on one project at one time right. and um, we, uh, we had to work hard but, but we, uh, we got it done. Well, I'm sure some of the conversations, it's never fun to have to go back and say, look, we have to defer a project. But at the end of the day, when you're talking about what it's going to mean for the region and the ability to take $4 billion and, and, and take Campo to, to help uh, free up some money to help make that, that more impactful project happen, that's, uh, that's very good for the region. Yeah. I think everybody's going to benefit fit for that in, in the long run. So. Well, and that's one of those long-term um, goals that that you have yep. to keep in mind. Campo has been very focused on I-35 for a very long time That's great. and we it would have been crazy for us to miss that opportunity. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Okay, what is the vision and goals of Campo for the six the six county region? Obviously you've got uh, a lot of folks, a lot of stakeholders, but what are y'all's overall vision and goals for Campo? Yeah. So in the 2045 plan, which we just completed, we kind of put together a vision statement, which talks about coordinating regional infrastructure um, and operations for um, better safety, connectivity, and personal mobility, um, and to act also to, but to balance that with economic growth and all in dealing with scarce resources, which, um, you know, obviously we always are, are um, underfunded, right? Overprogrammed and underfunded. Um, but to do that regionally, and we have a very diverse region. We have uh, Cal Caldwell County, which is one of our smallest counties um, in the MPO, and then Travis County. And the needs of both of those um, are very diverse. Uh, and so striking that balance um, and making sure that, that um, our goals continue to support transportation in both those areas. That's fantastic. Campo's Platinum Planning Program seeks to balance everything you just talked about. Obviously taking and balancing economic development against needs, against the environment and such. Um, can you talk to us a little bit about what Platinum Planning and the Platinum Planning Program means to Campo and how it's actually benefited you know, overall long-term planning process? Yeah, the Platinum Planning Program, say that three times fast, right, <laughs> <laughs> um, has, has been really successful in that it's allowed us to do specific targeted and focused kinds of plans, for example, incident management, demand man traffic demand management, tra um, and then other types of things with regard to transit and whatnot, um, and take those and then build on those and so we did uh, eight plans and those are programs studies whatever you want to call them but that then fed into our 2045 plan and I think that allowed us instead of trying to do this massive planning of the 2045 plan all at once it allowed us to do it chunks at a time but each one of those plans is very important on its own and um, some of those uh, were again more controversial than others um, but uh, you know a regional arterial focus that we did uh, serves as some of the basis for a transportation plan for example for some of our smaller areas and in for example in Williamson County because we'd already done our plan that particular one wasn't as meaningful for us internally but it certainly showed what our connections were um, to our surrounding counties. So it helped drive consistency really across all six counties is what it sounds like to me. Absolutely. Great. That's great. Okay, transportation mobility needs of this region are very unique. Um, what innovative solutions have come out of y'all's planning process? Um, well, one of the ones that uh, I think stands out for me, and again, this goes back to what we talked about earlier, it's something that we can do that's a shorter term kind of project and implementation where people can see results more quickly, and that's our regional incident management study that was conducted. And it included an overall strategic plan and um, performance assessment that allows us to study the impact of incidences to a traveler, you know, my, I run out of gas, my car breaks down, et cetera, um, and to then look at how we can reduce those secondary incidences 
places um, on the roadway because that in and of itself and sometimes I you know talking with people in the transportation world I'm preaching to the choir right but the faster we can clear a, an incident off the roadway uh, the less congestion we're going to have on that roadway and the less opportunity we're going to have for a secondary um, incident and so that project in and of itself um, is one of those that I think is unique but it's also innovative in that we came up with about 29 different recommendations that are already being implemented and we can see those happen really quickly and to and and get some real gains out of it especially in terms of the safety world that's great okay commissioner uh one more question for you mm -hmm. um, can you give us a picture of what the future of mobility in the campo area um, looks like and then really um, how, how fast will these things come along if you will well, the big unknown right now is will the commuting behaviors that have come as a result of COVID-19 stick? Will they continue? Right. Um, if they do, then we should have some congestion relief for the near term. Um, but people are loving us uh, right and left and they're still moving here and businesses right. are still coming. And so um, the present demands and how we've adjusted during COVID-19 and people are going into the office less, maybe they're working at home more. Um, that works great for now, but as new businesses and new people come, we're gonna continue to see the demand on our transportation system. So I think the worst mistake we could make would be um, to kind of stop moving forward with our plans. We have to continue to move forward. Certainly, we have to make appropriate adjustments based upon the commuting behaviors and how sticky they might be in the future, as well as the impact on funding of transportation. Um, and as all, with almost anything, um, our future depends on available funding, right? So um, if we continue to fund those long-term uh, priorities, then uh, we will be able to achieve, I think, some traffic reductions and reducing uh, some of the commute time as we see more and more projects come online that get rid of signals, for example. Uh, your commute time goes down. So I think the real balance for us is because we have new commuting patterns, we have potentially new or less funding, um, we're gonna really have to look at that. But I think overall, if we continue to march forward and implement what we've laid out in our Campo 2045 plan, um, we'll see improvements to congestion. You know, they say you can't build your way out of it, um, but we've seen in some places that you can. And so I, I think every, at the end of the day, everyone wants more time at home with their family and less time on the road, right? I mean, that should, should be our overall transportation Absolutely. goal. Um, and, and I think many of the projects in our plan get us there, uh, but it's gonna take tenacity to stick to it and keep marching down that path to make sure that we implement those plans. That's great, that's great. And, and once again, you gotta, it sounds like you have to keep your thumb on the pulse throughout, uh, really at all times, and it be flexible and really continue to meet the challenges day to day. Yeah. We don't wanna be one of those that had a great plan and put it on the shelf and didn't implement it. Right. I think, you know, I, if, if looking back um, on history, you know, 50 years from now, I wanna be um, remembered as somebody who had, or was a part of the vision to make transportation better and follow through. Well, that's fantastic. Well, Commissioner, thank you for being a part of our program. Um, there's no doubt that Williamson County um, and Campo is in good hands with, with you, um, helping to really foster these, these big ideas for us. So thank you very much for everything you're doing for the community and really to help make us a great area here in Central Texas. Well, thanks, and thanks for letting me be a part of it. Enjoy the conversation. Thank you. And thank you for being a part of our program today. If you enjoyed our program, we ask that you go online, give us a five-star review. Please also follow us um, on YouTube or wherever you get your, your podcasts. Um, once again, thanks and look forward to seeing you next time.